What? Man, I hate Spotify. They so evil. Why they keep doing this to me, man? It's the network. So I'm scrolling through Instagram at like 4 a.m. in the morning, and I come across a post by my guy, Nick the Manager. And it reads, it's a DM conversation where it says thousands of artists are having their accounts removed, DistroKid claims it's Spotify is doing, and due to the fake streams, but it's only DistroKid artists, and many of the artists don't even have enough streams for them to have been fake. Very strange. Apparently 15K or so artists have been removed. Well, first of all, I've already heard the number to be a lot bigger than 15K, but we're not gonna, you know, get onto that because it's all hearsay at this point. But what's funny enough is I was already working on this video literally then this happened, right? Because there's a lot of issues with Spotify. So we're going to cover three very specific things that every artist, even just manager, anybody in music really needs to understand, right? One, this being taken down, right? The music being taken down. Two, why it's literally impossible for Spotify to do right by artists. Impossible. So it's not all their fault. I promise you it's not all Spotify's fault. Three, what to expect from Spotify, some things that are actually going to happen and some things that you know, are a little bit predictive. So, number one, yes, songs have come down. In that that text thread, they said it might be DistroKid. No, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty likely to be Spotify, not just DistroKid blaming Spotify. People have been told about fake streams from years. If you look it up on Google, a lot of songs have already been removed for fake streams before. I'm telling you, this is a warning. It's only going to get worse. Us as an agency, we've already abandoned so many playlists because this is a massive issue, right? Why? Because, all right, it's so hard to really manage and understand which of these playlists are quality or not. There's some methods that, that we do to, to ensure or get increase the likelihood, but to be honest, it's extremely difficult, right? To the point that we've like begged, begged clients not to rely so heavily on playlisting just to get their streams. We've lost clients for that reason because they wanted to focus on that and we were like, look, okay, fine. We're, we're just gonna have to let you go. We're not gonna put you down that route so you can come blame us on some of the issues, right? But that'll be a whole nother video, right? Understand this. Spotify could, they could, you know, create an accredited system where the playlisters, the third party playlisters are verified. So you know that it's quality, you know that they're not, um, you know, having fake streams because they're managing them and they incentivize those people to have a certain status and keep that status. All right. They could create some kind of program for that somehow if they really took that seriously and care. And that would be amazing for the artist community. But the problem is they can't. Why can they not do that? Because, well, let me explain this, all right? Spotify has a business model, all right? Let me see. Tip for all the Vaseline users out there, don't put too much of it on before you go to the whiteboard. Butterfingers. Anyway. Spotify has this business model and a massive part about their business model is their subscriber base, right? Because that is their single most point of leverage because if you have music, right? They are the gatekeeper to get access to those subscribers. Beautiful, right? Yes, there is this back and forth because the subscribers want music. It's a marketplace. That's the common thing about marketplaces, chicken and the egg. However, their single most point of leverage is their subscribers. Nobody has a large of a subscriber base for audio, particularly for music, right? Now, the issue, right? Because they could say, hey, the music. Oh yeah, what's the music? The music essentially is artist, right? They're kind of one of the same. You might not even be able to see that, so bump it, right? But with that being said, there's an intermediary. There's an issue, right? So you could say, hey, I want to introduce these subscribers to the music, which the artists are the creators of the music, but the issue comes where the blocker is. The blocker are record labels. They, at least traditionally, are the big, bad, evil person, all right? And why is that an issue? Well, because record labels are the owners of this stuff. All right, they're the owners of the masters in so many cases, they control the music. So you aren't really serving artists. 
you have to serve the record labels. And the industry has already been established to this point where we already know the negative history, right? We know how, how labels have done artists wrong or, or just taken an excessive level of ownership or shoot 100% of the ownership in so many cases. That is why these record labels are still around intellectual property all these other things keep changing around them but as long as you are the owner and the thing that you own cannot be used somebody can create a new platform at any time any day they're still going to have to speak to you at some point right you might let them get big enough right and then once they get big enough it's like oh not not yeah that uh that music i need you to run that check all right that's what the labels have done to Spotify. They're doing it in their own way to, to TikTok now. And it's going to happen as long as they hold the very most important thing, which is the ownership. And this is why artists have so much trouble being served. Because I know, you know, a lot of artists are like, oh, Spotify sucks and they're so bad and they're mean. And why don't they just serve the indie artists and not care about the big artists? Well, one, it's, it's a business and that's, that's the biggest opportunity. And two... The biggest issue comes back to when I say ownership, they own the music that has the most marketplace value. All right. So, yes, you can come out with a new song, but it's an odd. Right. It's an odds game. It's a gamble. They don't know if your song's going to blow up. They don't know if you even have enough money to make your song go up, blow up. Right. But when it comes to record labels, the music that they already own has already been created in terms of marketplace value, right? People already know it. These are classics. Yes, there's new songs that record labels come out with, but the money is in that back catalog, right? The Marvin Gaye, the, the I mean, the OJZ, the, 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 the 90s, whatever, right? The Beatles, all that stuff, all right? So with that being under, understood, if you come into a crooked game, it's hard to be the one who cleans it up. Especially when the crooked one is the one who owns everything. You're coming to their battlefield. So in that way, it is not all Spotify's fault. So let's read this, this mission, right? Because it sounds so altruistic. Our mission is to unlock the potential of human creativity by giving a million creative artists the opportunity to live off their art and billions of fans the opportunity to enjoy and be inspired by it, right? See, that's exactly what I said, right? Artists, fans. They want to bridge that gap, but is that guy in between the record label that, that's blocking that off? And I guarantee you, all right, at some point, Spotify is really going to say, hey, look, artists, well, artists means different type of creators because we know they're moving into podcasting, different different video. I actually have a video that's, that I'm about to create in terms of artist leverage and how artists can build leverage or how they need to look at about leverage to understand it. I'll put it in the description when I fi uh, finish it. So, um, but understand that this is what's happening, all right? If we had, that's the major labels way up here. I don't know if that could be seen well. So majors and indies. The thing is, if they truly had a comprehensive playlisting program that allowed third party playlisters and people who have all these niche interests um, to really just create and find these new artists, these independent artists, they truly could act as extended A&Rs, right? You would make sure, you know, all these playlists aren't just being payola and things like that. They would have their own program. And if they had that, you know, had everything truly relying on just the algorithm and the merit of how much people like music, well, that would take indies from down here to up here and majors from up there to in the center. That would level the playing field, but that's an issue. Labels don't want to level the playing field. Why would they do that? That's against the business model. It's already hard enough to make music succeed and to find an artist whose song's going to break. There's already that issue. So there's a conflict of interest there because labels have a disproportionate influence on Spotify, what they can do. But of course, with that comes what they can't do. But just imagine if your man or woman couldn't get a good job because they didn't have a car and you bought them a car and they used that car to not only drive to work, but they drove that car across town to cheat on you. Ooh, just trifling. That's how the labels look at this scenario. It's like, I own your most valuable asset. I give you the thing that keeps your bills on. So if anybody's going to eat, I'm going to eat first. And I just happen to be greedy. That's the scenario here. But that 
create some other opportunities for Spotify or at least some opportunities for Spotify that artists may be able to see as beneficial in terms of progress. So that's the third point, what we can expect from Spotify. Well, Spotify already has in the works a better version of the ads right, that they've currently had. Because we know ad, the ad studio in terms of music, it has not been the move for, well, since it came out. But this is what it's supposed to look like. And I say suppose because they haven't went public with certain things. We're talking about systems where you can put your music after songs that actually sound like that music, right? Or that would actually make sense for it to come after. More like playlist style, right? But from an advertising back end, right? In the same way you would pay for your ad to pop up in certain places, you would have your song pop up, right? More organically and it would play after the right song, right? Then you have things like the marquees where the ads actually pop up, right? Things are a little expensive. We'll get to that in a second, all right? But things will actually pop up. Like, let's say uh, you have a new track, a new album or EP that comes out. And then, you know, people are scrolling through the app. They open it up. Bam. There you go. Your big um, album announcement. Now, the right way to go about that tactically, whenever those things do get released, if they do still get released in mass, That'll be a whole video. We'll get into the tactics. But understand this. So far, even with that being said, these things that are far more helpful and far more beneficial for artists are going to be expensive. All right. And that issue comes right back to the same scenario. If we actually give you the right tools, but the tools are still expensive, there's still a gatekeeper type vibe there. Why is that? Because we know labels can afford a 5,000 minimum budget. If, you're, if their budget has to be 5,000 minimum, all right, $20,000 budgets. If you need a certain amount of money that's just outside of reality for most independent artists, they can say they have the tools, but the access isn't, isn't there, all right? It's not truly accessible. So there's a, there's a while and some things that we have to watch out for in terms of Spotify, but if they do come out with an ecosystem that actually has great advertising is going to be something that they can control and at least they can get some kind of profit out of not going to allow you to truly capture data from bringing in outside traffic from like a Facebook or YouTube or whatever and that to be used right and tracked properly to then better do so and bring streams. No, they're going to have the most efficient and effective um, advertising platform within platform within their platform if that actually ever does happen at scale. For labels, it's going to happen. But at scale and accessible to, to indie artists, that is yet to be seen. That's how you should think about Spotify. No, it's not all their fault in terms of some of the evil things that, that, have, um, that they've done, right? But... The reality of the situation is artists should not be relying on Spotify. I understand they're the big they're big man on campus. However, you know, the labels, they, they got the, the cojones, you know, in their hands. So you can't quite rely on on their word to always be for the artists. Right? And, and just leave it at that. So anybody way, anybody who likes this video, right, uh, likes this type of topics, make sure you follow us, subscribe and hit that notification bell because what we do on this channel, man, we we drop free courses in, in our comments in the community section. We'll just post links to free courses every once in a while. So you're only going to get that notification if you have the notification bell on. Make sure you do that if you want access to that, because if you miss it, you know, we put it up for a period of time, then we take it down. If you miss it, you miss it. But we do do that multiple times. It's not like we just do it a one and done. So make sure you subscribe, like, share with anybody else you think will be interested in this topic. Y'all have a good one. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. It's the Matt work.